Welcome to Joyful Guitars. My name is Chris behind the camera. It's Matt, as always. And it is Friday, Woo. also known as... I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Friday. <laughs> nope. Am I right? No. I hate you. This thing a lot. I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are here today to answer one of the oldest questions that humans have been asking since like the Ice Age, which is, are lasers better? <laughs> and the answer to that question, I think, without even doing anything, is always... Yes, lasers are always better. Uh, a couple of months ago, the wonderful folks over at Ortur reached out to us, had seen our channel and said, we'd love to send you a laser cutter uh, for you to put on the, sh on the channel. Uh, you can kind of do whatever you want with it. We're not even really asking for a review, but we want you to use it in some form on your channel uh, and just kind of let us know your thoughts. And so what we have here is their Laser Master 2 Pro, which is a 400 by 400 millimeter laser cutter. Uh, it even has the ability to add on the rotary attachments, which they sent us as well. But it's kind of been sitting over here on the side of the shop for about three or four weeks, collecting a little bit of dust because we put it together. Um, we had some issues um, with some of the uh, hardware on it. The folks at Ortur were really great and sent us the pieces that we needed to get it up and running. And they have been wonderful to work with. And we finally got it working, but we really haven't done anything with it. And so Matt and I were like, what are we gonna do? I didn't really want to do a review of this. There's there's hundreds of reviews of this laser cutter on YouTube. If you're interested in those, go check those out. But what we wanted to do was to do something practical with it, which was, can I use a laser cutter to make maybe some inlays and can it do it better than I can do it by hand? Uh, to give it a little bit of background, I have been doing all of my inlays for years by hand using just a little handsaw and it's very time intensive. Um, I have a CNC machine, so I'm obviously very familiar with programming vectors and cutting things out. CNC machine does not do a good job of making inlays, in my opinion, uh, for a, a, a plethora of reasons that I can get into at a later time. But So what we've decided to do today is cut out a really simple inlay, and uh, we're not actually going to put it on a guitar or anything like that, but, uh, and because we can cut out whatever the heck we want, why not do a meme? <laughs> why not? <laughs> yeah. And this meme, uh, I think, really ties it all in together because the meme is all about like, or maybe. <laughs> not sure if. <laughs> not sure if a laser cutter uh, is, is going to do the job for me. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to cut out some stuff on here. We're going to put it together and I'm going to let you know uh, whether or not I think that this laser cutter actually has a purpose in the Luthier's Workshop. Uh, so yeah, with that, we're gonna go send some files over this way and uh, get this thing making some smoke. All right, it occurs to me before I head over to the computer and start sending files over to here, I need to do two things. Uh, one of which lets you know some of the basic details about this laser cutter and then also how I'm actually taking files, turning them into something usable to send to the machine. So the first thing that I wanna talk about on this machine uh, that's a little bit different than a lot of the laser cutters that you're going to find, uh, like the Dremel ones or like a Glowforge that are all inside of its own encased thing. Um, this one here obviously is just kind of free floating. Um, that has a disadvantage in the sense that if you're cutting something or etching something while it's running and you accidentally bump into it, you're going to completely mess up the thing. Um, the upside to it is that you can set it on top of very, very large things if you'd like to. Say you're I don't know, making a dining room table for your house and you want to like put your family crest in the middle of it. Well, you can just set this thing right in the middle of your table and just have it do its thing, which is a really cool thing. Um, it's also really easy to store when you're not using it because it doesn't take up any space. Um, so it's not a positive, it's not a negative, it's just something to consider. Um, but for $469, which is all that this machine costs, uh, I don't think that you should be expecting um, all of that really nice encasing that you would get on a larger machine. Another thing that happens because it doesn't have an enclosure that it goes inside of is that um, fume extraction can be a bit of a problem. Uh, when Matt and I first fired this thing up a couple of weeks ago, uh, one of the issues that I was having is that every 10 seconds I was setting off, there is a little se uh, little sensor right here, it's like a smoke detector. And if, it's, if it senses that there's too many fumes, it'll actually kind of set off an alarm and it stops the machine in its tracks, which is useful because obviously it's saying, hey, this isn't safe. 
Uh, but the downside to it is if you haven't come up with a good solution to get the fumes out of the way as quickly as possible, it'll just stop the machine. And I haven't spent a lot of time with it, but I haven't been able to figure out a way to get the machine to just turn back on again and start where it left off. What I've always had to do when the smoke detector goes off is just start over. And that can be a little bit of an issue. But so what we tend to be doing with this is we either run a big box fan over on the side of the workbench to just blow the smoke out this way. And we turn on the um, exhaust fan in our paint booth to get rid of the smoke. Uh, or what we're going to do today, which we haven't tried, is old trusty Sucky McSuck face here, which is a solder fume extractor that also is advertised as being a good um, fume extractor for laser cutters. We just haven't tried it yet. Um, should give us uh, a good solution to that. Um, but those are trade-offs that you make. And uh, I mean, like I said, it's not even $500 for this laser cutter. And uh, the fact that you can use it as a functional laser cutter as well as an etcher for that price is fantastic. But with it, you're gonna have some compromises. Um, let me get into just for a split second on how we actually are going to make an inlay using this. Uh, what we do is we found a piece of art that we really like. As I said, we're gonna do that meme from uh, Futurama. And uh, we have to vectorize it, which I have a piece of software called Vector Magic, which I sent it into. It turns it into a vector. Uh, which is different than like a JPEG or an image. It actually has the, the data inside of it still that tells the machine where those lines are. Then I took it and put it into VCAR, which is another piece of software, and decided, okay, these are my dark colors. These are the reds. These are the yellows. These are the whites. And I brought them into different little, just kind of separated them all. And then now I'm going to export them from our computer that we run the CNC machine on over to the laser cutter piece by piece. So the first thing that we're going to cut are the flesh tones. So it's going to be the face of, of uh, what's his name again? Fry. A uh, Fry. Yes. We are going to, uh, we're going to do that first. Uh, okay, Boomer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So part of it is uh, obviously the question of, is this laser cutter going to be as good at making inlays as I am? I think the answer to that before we even get going is probably going to be yes. But a part of it also is figuring out the how. How do I know that okay this is the image I want to do how do I uh, kind of in a controlled way get it all sent to the machine in an orderly fashion so that I can cut all the pieces out and then reassemble them back into something that looks the way that I want so I think that covers pretty much everything uh, we're gonna crank this thing all the way up to a hundred percent and uh, just send it and see if we can't start off by cutting out uh, his face and see how it looks so with that I will get this machine going <laughs> So we just ran that first pass of cuts uh, and we have not actually tried this yet out of this wood. Um, first of all, Sucky McSuckface here really did a great job. But look at this. this that was that was maybe what, Matt? Maybe three minutes? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, but let me pull this out if I can. Look at this. Come on. You just can't. The level of friggin' accuracy, uh, not, not accuracy, but it's like the, there's a crispness to it, right? Yeah. That you don't get on the CNC, which is the really cool. Yeah, yeah, and it's super cool. So that worked out really good. Uh, let me pop this his ear off real quick. Uh, so you don't waste any any uh, very much wood at all because there's not the kerf of a bit. Um, but yeah, that worked really well. Yeah, um, this is one of the downsides to laser cutting, I think, always, is that you do end up with a little bit of burning around the edge. Um, but you can get it all dialed in really well. So that so far came out really good. I'm stoked about it. Um, while that was running, uh, I actually did look on the website, and uh, they do make enclosures for this uh, machine. But I do want to keep hitting on the fact that if you're going to buy a machine like this, you are going to need to have some sort of dust extraction. I'm not dust, a fume extraction solution. So that's you need to weigh that into the cost of the machine. But what we're gonna do now is, because I'm super stoked about how that came out, uh, is we're just gonna load up the rest of these woods in here and start cutting and then put it all together and see if it looks super good. So uh, I can tell you so far, the level of accuracy is fantastic and this probably would have taken me, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes to cut out um, this accurately by hand. So, so far, 
And 15 years of experience. And 15 years of experience. Yeah, any dummy can come in here and, and run run this thing off, no problem, which is, I'm one of the dummies. <laughs> so yeah. I think we'll do the rest. I've got um, the rest of the wood set up here, already kind of cut and thickness. So we've got some pieces to load in, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll do some cool montage for you guys. I don't know. <laughs> So that I don't know, maybe maybe fifteen minutes. It's twenty. Twenty. Okay, so twenty minutes it took us to do that. Uh, and <laughs> I was t commenting to Matt the whole time, like, dude, you could never even just switch out from like one material to the next on the CNC machine. It's a whole thing because you got to you got to have a hold down system. You have to use either on um, the double sided tape uh, or super glue or clamps. With this, you just whoosh, stick it inside here and it cuts. I'm like pinging about how easy this was and how uh how accurate it is and then here's the real thing here this is what blew my mind is this is the to make it look like a cartoon obviously it needs um an outline and i mean look at this look how flimsy it is but it cut it perfect because there's no moving head on it like on a cnc machine this would be impossible to cut out on cnc so the next step is to just i guess do this right let's see well let's do this one real quick so we'll just this is the outline of, of his hair here um, and I haven't tested any of this out yet, but are you kidding? Look at that. <laughs> Jesus. Now, these are thicker than I make my inlays for guitars. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm, like, so excited about this. And I'll glue, I have to glue all this together, obviously, but look at that, Matt. <laughs> His eye goes here. I got some pieces that go inside here. This is ridiculous, man. Oh, look at that fun. It's very, very satisfying to put together too. Uh, where does this piece go? This is his shirt. And I'm gonna turn it around so that you guys can see. there and that goes there are you kidding me oh wait we're missing an ear we're missing his little earpiece I might have to cut that out I might have thrown it away but <laughs> uh, look at that wait wait for it how do I do this there it is look at that they're like watch I'll spray it with a little bit of oh here's the ear we'll spray it with a little bit of mineral spirits Dude, that's crazy. Look, and here's his earpiece. Uh, I, what I can't believe is the, the how everything just fit. I thought that I was gonna have to change all these offsets and everything to get pieces to fit really tightly. But watch. Oh my God, that's that <laughs> that's, was that's <laughs> violent. <laughs> I know. I apologize. Look at that. <laughs> that is so freaking cool. Um, so I gotta glue all that together, but I, I'm not. I don't even need to do that on camera for you guys. You, you get the idea of how easy and uh, yeah, not sure if handmade or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the overarching question that we had when we made this video was: Is this machine gonna be better at making inlays than I am doing them by hand? And I think that after doing that for 20 minutes, right? It took us 20 minutes to do that. I think that we have a clear answer and that is yes, it does a better job at making inlays than I do. They're more accurate, uh, they're faster, they waste less material. And you don't have to have 15 years worth of uh, trial and error in order to make a really good inlay. So I think that uh, that's the, uh, the headline story when it comes to this thing for $469. Uh, anybody at home who's got a budget for that and the space for it, um, you could buy this and then start putting really nice inlays on your guitars and offering that as a service for your clients. Now, 
they're not handmade and I don't think that you should expect to be able to get the return on it as if you were making all of these inlays completely by hand. Um, there's obviously gonna be a learning curve there. Remember, Matt and I came into this having years of experience on CNC machines, so we kind of already knew the lingo and how to kind of take a file, digitize it, and send it to this machine. Um, but besides that, it's, it's all very easy for you to figure out and do. And I definitely would highly recommend if inlays or something that you want to do you don't think that you have the time to learn or the skills to learn um, that you should maybe think about getting this uh, and this is just one way that you can use this laser cutter inside of a luthier's workshop um, i think you could use this to start cut out bridge plates to cut out sound boards it, the sky's the limit you just have to really think about it um, and you can also use it for etching if you wanted to put your logo on certain parts of the guitar um, that's also another useful thing that you could use this for um, if you're interested in getting this machine, um, we are going to have a link below this video. Um, it is going to be an affiliate link. The folks at Otur, that was kind of part of the deal. Here's a link to it. Um, so if you're interested in getting it, please use our link. Um, we're going to get a little bit of a kickback on that. That kind of helps keep the lights on here for us. So uh, yeah, me and Matt are going to find something fun to do with this, <laughs> this little thing here and uh, put it probably somewhere in the shop, I would guess. It'll be floating around in the background somewhere. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, you may or may not be seeing this thing uh, make an appearance in future videos. And uh, we'll see you in the next one, guys. Thanks.